Hi, right, John, how you doing? But welcome everybody who's watching this on the replay. Um, today we're going to be talking about long-term warming up email sequences um, and uh, how to use your social content to be able to create this fantastic warming up thing. Before we start, yesterday, uh, well, so not yesterday, last week at the round table, we did LinkedIn outreach. John was just sharing with us and I very sneakily have had to restart the meeting so I can record this um, <laughs> because he's he's been very kind and sharing some results. So John, over to you. I spent 20 minutes doing applying the things that you you taught us in the last lesson. I only did 15. It took me about less than 20 minutes to do it. Um, and I got um, I sent out 15 uh, requests with a message that you kind of suggested we used. I picked up nine new connections and made three new bookings for our meetings, which is a lot better than sitting on the telephone, cold canvassing on the telephone. Trust me, it was a lot easier. So I'll be doing it every day now. So thanks for that. Yes. Thank you, John. I appreciate that. That's that's awesome. I do. Uh, uh, I would, you know, I, you know I, I, although I asked you to repeat yourself, I didn't didn't, didn't tee you up for that. So I do appreciate it, mate. Thank you. Thank you for the kind words. And if anybody is looking for where they might be able to find that bit of training, what we do um, is that we always have on our uh, YouTube channel. We put our round tables. We, if you've registered for this event. And even if you can't make it, we will proactively send it to you, the replay as a recording. Um, if you are, um, if you miss something or you want to look at some of these backdated uh, uh, events that we do, um, my Richard Woods channel, which I'm just getting up here so I can share with you. Um, oh, hello. That's me talking on Prentice stuff. That's the boring bit. But if you go on videos here, and you'll see here that LinkedIn Masterclass, that's the thing that we talked about with John. And there's stuff from here about Trello, Trello Facebook groups, how to host a five-day challenge. There's a ton of stuff on there. Um, so if you could do... So one thing I want to do is actually get my channel um, seen a bit more. So if anybody's on here wants to be kept up to date with that, could you do me a favor? I'm going to stick this in the chat now. Could you subscribe to me? That'd be lovely if you could do. Um, so I've put it into the chat now. Um, and also the nice thing about it is you'll be able to get the replays of all this stuff. Cool. Right. So I said I was going to start about five minutes past. It's now four minutes past. So it's now, yeah, it's four minutes past, five minutes past, whatever. Potato, potato. Let's do this. Who's up for doing this? Give us some thumbs up. Boom. Okay. <laughs> Good to see you. And Robin, I actually now can see you. So hello, sir. Um, right. Okay. So let's get started. Um, Long-term warming up sequences. That's what we're talking about, gang. So let me get the presentation sorted. As always, when we do this, we do the first part. So about 20 minutes of content. And then we like to leave at least half the session for Q&A and basically the round table part of what we talk about. And when we talk about round table, it's not just ask Richard question time. It's what do you do in your email marketing? What systems or software would you suggest how have you experienced it and and enrich the conversation that's what we like to do in part two um so but first is email marketing dead wow ah, gdpr uh, you know spam filters oh it never gets through oh it doesn't work right um the truth is and, and actually this is you know this kind of classic things look billions of people are using email um, far more than the biggest social network, Facebook, Facebook. I think we all know that everybody's got email or certainly the people that you want to sell to have an email, right? So this is kind of like a, a, a new point, but just to, to reiterate that. But the point being is I get so many inquiries from email. Whenever I do lead generation, I use email follow-up. If you send an outreach to someone email-wise, it works. We have a whole module in terms of what we do in, in our Million Dollar Sprint around cold email marketing and actually finding people and getting into their inbox. It is one of the building blocks of what I do. You may be here because of email outreach and warming up emails. Um, and that's just plain and simple so if you're not using these tools not just sending an email to say hey i've got this new thing could you come to it but rhythmically sending out thought leadership through email then you're missing out on a huge amount of value now i'm not, i'm not just going to pitch the concept of sending email right so don't worry guys i'm going to show you a really nice way of being able to create what we call a long-term warming up email sequence which is a heartbeat within your marketing activity Cool. Um, so what do we mean by this long-term warming up sequence? So let me jump onto the blackboard of truth and justice here. Oh, there you go. There's one made that I made earlier. 
Let me just get rid of that. Um, and looks like we're going to be using the rainbow pen today. That's all oh, here. Let's have a look. Yeah, look at that. Okay, good. Right. So if we want to have the trophy over here, which is um, that we want to be able to get, say, a strategy session or some sort of demo that you book with someone or some sort of sales meeting, right? So that's what the trophy is over here. What we want to think about is that you've got all of these people that may be sitting in your inbox collecting digital dust, right? Maybe in your Outlook, just as contacts, maybe kind of in your LinkedIn and you haven't actually um, looked at the fact that most of them are going to give their email addresses freely on there, right? You can find a database of people, even, even your, your zero, right? So if you're using accounting software, you'll find that there's a load of past clients on there that have got all their details and you've kind of left them simmering there and you haven't downloaded them and put them on something. What we want to do is aggregate together as much of those contacts as possible, dust off that old MailChimp account that you set up a while ago. And we want to start to think about them and think, well, actually, what are we going to do, right? And just because the rainbow pen is slightly difficult to see, I'm just going to switch across to white um, and do this. So we're going to push this into... Um, a sequence, right? And so the whole point of this sequence is that we want to produce to start off with four emails, right? And why do we do four emails is that we are going to push this entire database into this sequence, right? And at the start of this sequence, we're going to do a five day delay, right? So that's a five day delay. And um, I'm going to show you how to build this in a second. But why do we delay five days before we put them into a warming up email? Um, sequence is that if you have got new clients and say you're running, um, you're doing an event over here and you're getting people signing up to stuff or you're doing a five day challenge over here and they're signing up to stuff or you're doing LinkedIn outreach and they're signing up, you don't want to stick them straight in and they get email one, because if you stick them straight into an email sequence and they get an email straight away, what might happen is the email one might crash whatever emails that you've got set up within your um your your sequence in here because if you do a five-day challenge you might have five days of emails that you send to people over a five-day challenge or if you're connecting with people on linkedin you might do like a hey thanks for connecting me on linkedin and then a little nudge to say hey would you like to have a chat or something so you normally your different campaigns will be sort of five days worth of content that you're putting out so if you automatically once someone signs up here push them straight into a sequence then you'll crash your initial lead source. Whereas if you create this warming up sequence for every single thing that you're doing online and everybody automatically not only gets the follow-up from say a five-day challenge that you're doing or, a, or an ebook download you're doing or an event that you're running, but then they automatically get put into a five, into your long-term warming up, then that this wait, which could be five days or seven days is so, so important because after that time, then they hop into this email and you're just going to send an email say every seven days so you're going to send one every week and that just means that you know that anybody sitting in your database is going to have a bit of thought leadership from you every single week a little bit of warming up a little bit of interest and that's going to create call to actions so you'll send an email to say hey you know um Here's five tips to be able to do this, right? Um, if you're interested in this, then let's have a conversation and book a strategy session, right? Or here's um, seven mistakes people make when doing this. Or here's a access to one of our latest uh, YouTube videos, right? Bam, right? So that's the kind of thought leadership. Now, Gary Vaynerchuk, who you know has, has written a few things, he said a lot of crap as well, but um, he's he he knows what he's talking about. Um, he is a he wrote a book called Jab, 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 Right Hook. And what that means is give, 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 ask. And it's a really good book. But it's a simple it's a book that creates a, it's one of those classic business books that basically that's the entire concept. It's give, give, give and then ask for the sale. Right. And so I can I can bypass the reading of it for you. But it's a really clever concept, which is um, basically thought leadership. So value, value, value. And then the seventh one is like a short call to action email. And you basically go and ask them for a, a sale. You go and ask them to say, hey, look, um, I know you've been looking at our stuff for a while. Love to have a chat with you. Are you ready? Now, although you're doing a call to action on each of these emails, 
And I'm going to give you some templates for these um, in this. But although you're doing call to action, it's like, hey, come, you know, reply to me if you're interested in this. This is just pure call to action. Like, bam, that's the right hook. That's the ask. And then what happens after these first four emails go out? Well, you then go and keep on writing emails. Jab, 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 and right hook, right? And you just keep on adding these emails. Now, what you're doing is you're creating a chain of value. And if you can actually build this and add it and add it and add it to the end of your sequence, what you're essentially doing is you're laying the track as the train goes down. What do I mean by that, right? So if you've got, let's just kind of redo this. So these are your emails and it means you've got these seven day delays, right? Seven days, seven days, seven days. You push all of your contacts into this to start off with. That's the train that's the, that's the engine at the front of your train. That's all of your contact details are in that engine at the front of the train, right? What's at the back of the train is um, carriages, right? So you've got these different carriages um, at the back of the train. That is a train, it's classic steam going out of it. Now, these are the different weeks. So the first week is say you've got 5,000 people. That's the, that's the thing that's motoring down this, right? So say 5,000 people there, they go to this week, they risk it this week. So this is this is the bit where the 5,000 people are. Now, next week, you get another 20 new leads that come into your ecosystem. Okay, cool. So those 20 new leads get added, and now your 20 are sitting the week behind your main train, right? And then you get another 25 that come in the following week. Great, you've now got 25. So what they're doing is that when the, the main database is getting email three these guys are getting email one and the point of this is that you are um using that same sequence and you're repurposing and it's but it's an evergreen sequence so you'll keep on adding more and more and more people into this so what you've got to do all your job is just to make sure that the train doesn't fall off the track and then that's disaster because they no longer get any more emails all you've got to do is just write one email a week and just stay ahead of the main train. And you're constantly then creating this asset and the carriages just get more and more and more, it just rolls out and you're constantly pushing new and new and new content through it, but you're also laying more and more track for your main for your main train. And that's a really important piece because it just keeps, it keeps this thing adding value and adding value and adding value um, to that. And of course, the whole point of it is that this could be a really cool call to action. You do really well off of that. Great. We're getting loads of leads off of this. You're going to get a couple of appointments off of this email, a couple of appointments off of this. You've got the main train doing that. And so it doesn't matter which emails going, they're going to get appointments. And the other cool thing about it, right, is that these 20 don't all jump in at the same time, right? Because on Monday, five of them might have joined. On Tuesday, three of them might have joined on Tuesday. So although they're all in that seven days getting this email, it's not one day on those seven days. It's 20 people across that week are getting that same email. So once this starts to play out, it means that every single day of the week, even Saturday and Sunday, there is opportunity for you to be able to get leads and um, sales appointments from your long term warming up. Because every single day, there will be an email going out because some of your people would have converted on your Facebook ads or whatever on a Sunday. Some people would have converted um, and become a LinkedIn connection on a Saturday. And as long as it's all just automatically feeding into this, the opportunity becomes pan week. And therefore, that gives you a really nice um, rhythm and a really good uh, frequency in terms of your volume of, of sales and stuff coming in, right? Or volume of uh, appointments coming in. Cool. So what I'm going to do is just, um, does that does that bit make sense at this stage? I'm going to go into where we get the content from and stuff, but I'm just going to pop back up and, and have a look at all you lovely people. Um, does that make sense, what I'm saying in terms of how that works? Robin's giving me a thumbs up. Any Any questions? around that at this stage i'm happy to take any questions alex give me thumbs up claire's thumbs up good stuff yeah all good just one go on robin um you're are you targeting do, do you need do you do any particular times a day on your initial targeting so so when you when you set this up 
you can then set this up to send at a particular time. So Remember, sorry. I, I'm going to go over different software, but the nice thing about it is that um, some software allow you to send it uh, at say, say 11 o'clock, you feel there's a good time in the morning to send an email. You can actually set it up to send at local time for the person that's subscribing. So it would send at 11 o'clock, you know, West Coast US time for the people that are on your database over there, 11 o'clock in the UK time. So it would send at different times yeah. as far as you're concerned, but as far as they're concerned, always send at 11. So yeah. the whole point of these weights is that people come into that, it waits, and then it yeah. handles that. And then the trigger is, right, wait five days and for the time to be 11 o'clock their time, boom, it then sends out. Cool? Makes sense? Pretty cool, right? It's a nice, it's a nice way of working out. Good. Okay, let's keep on rocking and rolling. Um, so uh, what, what we see with this is that we include it in most funnels, right? So if we look at this funnel, this is what we would call a classic weekly moment funnel, right? So let's let's just, you know, you, you guys are on my current weekly moment. This is our marketing roundtable. We talk to people about they should produce one piece of great content every single week. Um, that they they invite their audience to so that could be a podcast that you create it could be your your real um uh you launch a, a really good piece of youtube content each week and let people know about it it could be an event like this that you invite people along to it whatever your weekly moment is that's what you're doing so if you look at this kind of weekly moment funnel here i've got my weekly moment in here i've got my organic lead generation through linkedin if that's what i'm doing and i'm sending people into it because i'm just focused on linkedin and then I've got these emails, which also invites people to it. And that's where this warming up sequence starts. So you're sending different emails, call to actions. You see getting people into the weekly moment. And then you see these dotted lines straight to a strategy session. That's kind of right hooks. So some emails go weekly moment, other ones are right hooks. But that's where it would show up within a funnel, right? So you would include this weekly uh this this rhythm within most funnels that you're doing it it is it sits nicely alongside um your weekly moments cool um it demonstrates your credibility it keeps your name in the frame with the audience because some people just aren't ready yet or some people just don't know you well enough yet or their world has or their business isn't big enough yet right and so it keeps your name in the frame um it's that kind of classic like when someone phones um, if you just, or when someone needs some, needs your help, if you just sent them an email that week, then you're going to be the one of the two or three people that they phone, right? Um, it generates the strategy sessions, as we said. Um, it reuses your fleeting social media content. So social media content, we spend loads of time agonizing over a post, but actually once it's sent, it's gone. It's like a YouTube video that you might create. Once you've created it, it's gone that week, right? It might sit there getting views if you if the algorithm works, but if you add it into a long-term warming up, it will continue to yield for you, right? Um, and once it's automated, it's totally hand-free and the management of it can be delegated. What do I mean by that? Well, you could just get on fiverr.com, you could find a great copywriter or you could use something like chat GPT, right? So we talk about the AI piece, right? So if you've got a load of YouTube videos, you just chuck the, 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 uh, them into chat GPT and that will create blog posts for you and then those blog posts, you just clamp onto the end of this long-term warming up, right? So this whole thing, you could give that as a task to a VA. You could say, hey, VA, grab like these 20 different YouTube videos that I like, and I want you to chat GPT them. I want you to create nice articles, send them back to me. I'll have a quick read, make a couple of edits, and then I'll send the 20 articles back to you. That then becomes 20 weeks of content that they clamp onto this long-term warming up. It's like it's almost a year's worth of content now. Right, or half a year's worth of content. Cool. So now we, we talk about social media rhythm. So one of the things that we talk about is actually what are you putting out on social media? And we always say on Mondays you should be doing an engagement creator because it spikes the algorithm. So that's like doing a poll on LinkedIn. So people kind of go, oh, okay, great. I'm spiking the algorithm there. Um, then on Tuesday, we say you should promote your weekly moments. You can say, hey, I'm launching my podcast tomorrow. I've got this great interview with this person. Look out for it. Then Wednesday, you actually then do the weekly moment, right? So that might be launch the podcast or actually run an event or whatever it is. Then Thursday, you can say, hey, who wants the replay of yesterday if you missed it? Or you can do a throwback Thursday for a bit of content that you did previously. And then Friday, thought leadership, where you can share a win or a case study. This day, 
is what we would suggest if you're doing a weekly moment um, outside of this, this day is a perfect day for you to be really focusing on creating that content and sending it out because that that's a good day. So if you wanted to actually think about when would you want to put together your social media long-term warming up, when would you want to write it? That works well because one, you can write that piece of thought leadership uh, and put it out on your social media channels on the Friday. And that's great. People see it and go, okay, it's cool, but it's fleeting. And then you plonk it into your long-term warming up. So you would actually post content that ultimately people might see, not see for 20 weeks because it's gonna you're going to put it onto the end of your long-term warming up. So you don't be afraid to post that piece of content onto your social media channel and then just chuck it onto the end of your long-term warming up. So you can see how that could work. Cool. By the way, Saturday and Sunday lifestyle, that's just showing a little bit of you. So you at the rugby, watch, you know, or you watching your kids play sport or you out for dinner, just show a little bit of human side of you. So that's kind of how you'd write a social media rhythm. You can, if you want to, make it your weekly moment. So what we're saying is that if you did, like I said in the example of the podcast, if you did produce a podcast that was excellent, you can then put that podcast onto the end of the weekly moment as well. So you can sort of see how it ties in with this. Cool. Um, so I bet you're already sitting on a long-term warming up sequence. Um, think about LinkedIn articles that you write, right? So you just go onto your profile, look at articles. I bet you've got some articles that are sitting in there gathering dust that nobody reads. You could easily just repurpose them into your long-term warming up. Think about old blogs that you've written. When I brought um, this boiler business, one of the things that we did is that we got them to actually write a load of blogs on the, they, they had personally written before I brought the business, a load of different blogs um, and it was just sitting on their website for SEO purposes and they weren't sending any emails out. So I just got them just to capture all of those blogs. There were blooming nearly, nearly, nearly something, there's nearly 50 of these blogs that an SEO person had done for them. Um, and we just pulled them out and just chucked them into a weekly warming up sequence. And they were tips like how to drain your, you know, how to, how to, um, get the uh the air out of a radiator or you know the bleed the radiator it's been a long time since i sold that business and my lingo is but i've lost the lingo um but uh we just put that into a long-term warming up sequence it was a, easy and they were sitting on it but they never thought about it and, and that was great it used to yield loads of uh, boiler servicing work for us um client reviews you know wins nice things people have said um look at this so you can get some nice recommendations on linkedin could you not repurpose what someone said about you into a nice little warming up email sequence? Um, so you just create a case, case study or testimonial around that. Um, you know, you can see there on Facebook where you can create case studies, testimonials around it, right? So nice little reviews. What we do, just so you know, this is my Instagram. We take screenshots. You can see I've got these two here, these screenshots. And we take these screenshots and we add them in to make a social media post for uh, Instagram. So we add them into Instagram like that. And then from there, we also can add them into long-term warming up as a bit of a case study. So think about repurposing these things in a couple of ways there. Um, you can share wins on social, right? So great, but also add them into the long-term warming up even better. Cool. Um, so loads of different things there from presentations you've done to YouTube videos, to the results from polls, to any PR coverage you've got loads of places. I bet you're sitting on a long-term warming up. Um, finally, we're going to talk about which software. Um, we love recommending uh, these two software. So MailerLite is probably the best free software out there. Um, it gives you a thousand contacts for free. Lots of people used to say MailChimp, if you look at the free. MailChimp just don't give you as much usability as MailerLite. And also they just try and get you to paying excuse me, really, really quickly. They used to be great at their free option. Now they've gone really commercial. And so they, it's just not as good. Um, particularly if you're trying to do a long-term automation, MailerLite, you'll probably need to, uh, sorry, MailChimp, you'll need to upgrade. Whereas MailerLite, you can do all of this up to a thousand contacts completely for free. Um, when you're thinking about clever stuff like delaying things um, for the clients um, 11 o'clock at their time, as opposed to your time, and those sort of ninja stuff, active campaigns probably the better place to go for more intelligent ways of doing this. And for about $15 a month, you'll probably get a thousand contacts in that in active campaign. So although you are paying straight off the bat, it probably is the most robust if you're trying to do 
clever stuff, right? Um, but for most of the people I talk about, MailerLite is a fantastic place to create this, okay? So here's the swipe file I talked about that I'm going to um, share with you. Um, and let me just put this into the chat now. And um, we, I'm just going to show you this. So here is four examples um, of, uh, here we go, everybody. So here we go. So four examples of long-term warming up email sequences, um, emails that you can use. And it's a Google Doc that you'll see here. And... In here, it's uh, essentially, so So I put it into the chat, just click that, have it open on a new tab so you can play with it. But this is the type of email. So one of the emails is like Bruce Lee on laser like focus. And basically what I've done is I've just taken a quote that I saw online and then I just wrote that into a bit of an email. And then I, my call to action is just reply, yes, this email and I'll send it over, right? You'll see a lot of my language within these emails aren't like, I've attached this or I've done this is trying to create intent by then replying to emails and saying yes. Um, you'll see here in number two, can I tell you a story? So there's a little story in here. Um, three, take this step. Um, and then, you know, who will pay you a million dollars? Now, this is very much more of that right hook, right? Right hook, because I'm telling them, watch this. And that video then becomes a bit of a, um, a, a sales meeting, right? So some nice, nice examples there for you to have a play with. Um, so take that, download it, um, and use it for your long-term warming up. Cool. Um, so we're just getting to, to half past now. So we've got loads of time for Q&A. Um, just before, uh, uh, oh, God, pe people still joining us coming into there. So um, so just thoughts, Gary. What, what do we think about this long-term warming up and, and who's been doing stuff? Uh, and and just, just give us some feedback quickly. Who wants to go first? Marie. Well, hi, Rich. Would you recommend that we um, <clears throat> plan and prepare the four weeks of content emails ready to lay down the tracks? Yeah, you. we always say write four first. Um, because because that's your jab 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 right hook right so you get your first set of four you think of them in fours we we, we tend to tell clients to write write them in fours you, you write a month's worth of content which is nice you do your jab 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 right hook it's all in one it's, it's like mini series isn't it like mini series within the series sequence um and so so that's the bet that's how i would approach it um and it just means if you if you really think about it if you put a seven day delay on the front and also a seven delay delay on the back when you implement it into software, it's not a month worth of content. It's actually six weeks worth of content because you've got the two delays in there. So you've got a, you've got six weeks to write the next email, right? Um, and so that's quite nice. So, so th that would be really well optimized as we're doing. Robin, yes. Yeah, sorry. Come back again. There's two points. <clears throat> um, I've not read jab 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 right hook, but I'm kind of understand the concept. I think that you've described. Yeah. It's literally. Um, <laughs> but can I just clarify? Are you effectively? Is you, you? I mean, you always want to have a call to action in any communication, but you're not really. Are you saying you're not really kind of asking for a buy until the fourth piece in the sequence? I.e., three three soft jabs and then one knockout. Yeah. Is that or not. I, I think that's the point. I mean, remember, a, a, a jab is still still a, a, an offensive move, right? If we're going to use this boxing analogy, um, yeah. so you are still you're still doing it, but you're not you, you're keeping to the distance. You're not you're not making a big move, but you are. So so the little call to action. What you'll see at the bottom of those emails is little call to action, just moving people. You know, just saying, look, if you're interested, and then ban the right hook is just pure like, hey, I want to work with you you know and so so it, it's that yeah okay so it's yeah so i mean because you're, you're sending action really for the first one is you know the second one's coming watch that type thing or look at that email what, what you yeah. don't do as well they've got to stack up on on their on their own so you don't say okay this is number one in an email series and then to, you know next week we're gonna be doing this i would always just have these things okay. as isolated pieces because nobody nobody what reads your whole thing back to front you know people mm -hmm. might be the first one they might see is email three because the spam filter or whatever got stuff or they just got busy right yeah. or, or just the, the title of it didn't capture imagination okay. and so so you just want to you want to make sure it's just 
each one is its its own island. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Yeah, fair enough. That makes sense. Yeah. Can I come to the second point? Um, I, I have you got any experience with send in blue? Because I use it. It does all the things you talked about, and you can have unlimited contacts. But is there a downside that you know about, Richard, that I don't? I, I don't know any downside. Um, I know send in blue. I've never used it. Um, that you know, with with email with with software in general, there yeah. is a million different things that people could yeah. use. Um, yeah. And so, you know, the reason why I, I use those two is they're pretty mainstream and relatively easy. When you think about email marketing software, you've got to look at things like deliverability. So, you know, does it have? Uh, is it is it trusted? Does it is the deliverability good? Yeah. Um, and ultimately, you, you then just just pick what you like the use of and, and, and the cost center of it. Um, if sending blues unlimited contacts and, and you can send it, well, that, that sounds like a really good. Um, yeah, three hundred, like, yeah, yeah three hundred emails a day for free. So you so the so the throttling is three hundred emails a day. Right. It's not you can have as many contacts as you like. I mean, nice. It, okay. it's, I mean, I've used it a few times, but it's just, yeah, I'll, I'll look at the one. So, got so what I would say in terms of that, then, of sending blue, so that's really similar to something like a woodpecker or a lem list. Um, and that's what you would call a cold email outreach. And so so a cold email provider is when you're trying to get into people um, who, who don't know you. Uh, and that's where you send a limited amount per day. Usually it's very stripped out and very clean um, looking um, emails. Um, but those ones is what you would do to a cold database. And then when they're in your database, then you'd use normally like a, a mass mailer to be able to do well, it. Well, actually, I, it does. It, it's not really the case, actually, Richard. It's, it's, it does automation. The, the 300 per day is just before you start paying. And then you pay like 15 quid a month. Oh, okay, fine. Yeah, so and then you can have as, go as far as you want. But it, okay. it's got all the automation. So I've used it for things like, if you set up a pathway, like I mean, I don't, I don't quite. You, we probably have different terminology, terminology, but you know, you're talking about a pathway, mm. in essence of of series of emails. But then you can you start with something simple like that. But then you can also say, okay, now send this email to somebody who hasn't read that one. Mm. Mm. You know, so you can and you can build more complex kind of flows. Nice. I mean, I'm, why bother? What you've outlined is really great but eventually well, get to a level of sophistication where, where maybe that is worth it so yeah do you know like like all these things it's about um yeah. I, I like i like throwing a really simple model in and, yeah and once you get up to there then you go right this is kind of working then you can transition into something a little bit more uh clever because yeah. that does sound good you know if you open that then send yeah. this then, but you get very it gets very complex very quickly yeah um, yeah i just but, don't want other folks to get a misimpression of think it's a yeah. kind of basic level thing it's quite an easy tool to start with and you can yeah. do some more so um but sorry i'm kind of dominating the conversation that's right well look before anybody just shoots off just 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 quickly because um we, i'm going to stick around for another 10 minutes and, uh, and ask questions but um, i want to invite you guys to have a one-to-one -one conversation with me about your marketing and uh, for me to kind of look at what you're doing in 2023 and actually how we can start to think about building not just the long-term warming up email sequence but maybe looking at where you're sending people to what are you actually packaging up as a product to sell to people are ads appropriate to you are linkedin outreach appropriate to you like we talked about yesterday uh sorry last week um and how do you do that well look if i if i just share my screens and just quickly show you we i've got a, a an application form on my website i say an application form it's just basically a link to my calendar right um but i want you to to jump on today and at the top you see this free strategy session here so if you go to this page on here um, there's this big, lovely orange button that says book your free spot with me. Um, and um, this then is my calendar. And it is totally into me. So you click on one of these, lots of different times for you to be able to do it. And it's one to one with me. Um, and last year we were doing them as groups. So you, you get the benefit of uh, um, actually doing one to one with me this year. And I'm just chucking that in there now. And jump in there. Uh, if you are um, a coach, consultant, course creator, or a marketing agency, those are the type of people that we help. Um, do jump into that one-to-one -one with me. And, and that whole the whole point of that is for me to show you like how you could run these campaigns. And at the end, um, if it's appropriate, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a demo of what the Million Dollar Sprint My Business does. I only sell one thing. It's a 12-month um, accelerator to be able to help you to be able to scale your business. Um, and if that's 
appropriate for you. I'll show you that. But if not, it's no problem at all. There's no obligation. We'll do a great little uh, strategy session with you and just show you some kind of ideas. So jump onto that now um, and uh, look forward to uh, um, having a chat with you further. Cool. Um, questions now. So we're going to go to Sunny and then John Gower. So Sunny, how you doing, mate? Good. Thanks, Richard. Um, so possibly you've covered this somewhere else, um, but I was just wondering, do that how do they support these platforms we've looked at do they support in any way with the whole double opt-in for uh gdpr yeah so so you can um you can double opt-in um people if you want i never do um i just i just find that if there's a double what happens with double opt-ins people opt in and then the, the, the email that says could you confirm opting in tends to go in someone's spam filter and then yeah. they never the it's like it's pointless um the the point being is someone's come to my website and downloaded an ebook they know that they've opted in like that, like, like um, you know, and, and even if someone just connects me on LinkedIn, they are giving me permission to communicate with them. There is a legitimate reason for me to tell my LinkedIn connections that there is a really cool thing that's coming up, like an event like this one that I think they would benefit from. And so therefore, I feel that there's a, an appropriate time for me to ask them and, and invite them. Right. And so I just I just feel if people get themselves all intertwined with um, too much. Now, look, this is light entertainment with Richard in the morning. Okay. So, um, as far as I'm concerned, I live outside of every jurisdiction. Um, I'm, I'm an island, um, and you shouldn't listen to me. Uh, this is all wrong and it's completely illegal, everything I say. Um, so mm -hmm. don't take any of my advice. Um, so that's the caveat, but I'm only just saying what I'm, uh, uh, uh <laughs> I'm just talking. I'm going to stop talking. It's, 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 it's my approach as well. So, um, so yeah, I think you're correct. Yeah, I Thanks. think I, th I think you just have to be sent. I think I always say to people about GDPR again, entertainment purposes. Um, it's like, um, do you remember doing your GCSE maths, and you would get one point for getting the question right, and one point for showing you're working. Yeah, right. So as long as you show you're working, like, well, yeah, how do you've got their email details? Well, they accepted my connection request on LinkedIn, and on their LinkedIn there is a button that says contact info and when i clicked on that it had their email and i wanted to contact them so i used the contact info they supplied as my connection like that's the reason <laughs> like does, does that sound like i did anything wrong just followed what their instructions were on their profile that they publicly gave um and so hence why you know so th there you go that's my that's my independent thoughts on that uh, <laughs> Um, Thanks. Sure. Does that help, Sonny? Okay, good stuff. Um, Mr. Gow. I've got email platform <clears throat> that I use just to send out for my meetings for next month, next week. So Monday's email that went out, went out this Monday for next week's meetings. Um, and I'm thinking I've got 15,000 people on that database. So mm -hmm. I really should be using it. And um, so out of the two, which would you say is the best? Would you say the active campaign is the best? Oh, well, uh, well, for a big database, look, if you're just sending an email every Friday, just look at whichever one is less expensive for 15,000. You know, they're, they're both great. I love them. Um, the, the, the point being is if you send out on Monday, hey, here's all the, the events this week, what I would do is have an evergreen long term warming up, say, on a Thursday or a Friday. And therefore, you don't need to tell people about what we what's happening this week because you can't because some people will get email one this week. Some people would have got email one in you know last February because it, they they joined it you know a year ago, right? And so it's that's where you got to remember with these things. They're not going to promote what's happening now, or they're not going to say, oh, you know, um, you know, Rishi Sunak just you know made this announcement, and therefore this is what I see about it because. That was irrelevant because you want it to be evergreen. And so that's why, um, so networking tips, you know, how to have a great networking business card, you know, whatever it is when it's related to you, that's what you were doing on the front. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Well, no worries. No worries. Um, good to see you guys. Um, we'll take a question from Ryan now. Ryan. Uh, oh, I think, oh, I think is that question up? And then I've just seen he's jumped into the chat. So the question I can see there, if, if, if you want me to answer it, for a marketing apprentice, what would, what is the best method for getting clients onto an email list? 
Um, also, how would you develop an initial email after they've come on? Right. So how best way to get people onto an email list is to do what we call an info swap, which is you swap something of value for them in exchange for their info. So info for info. And now that could be something like an ebook download, could be inviting people to an event like this. It could be um, getting people to uh, um, join a five-day challenge or a mini course or even joining a Facebook group. You can ask those three questions. There's a number of different options to be able to make that happen. Um, on my YouTube channel, you'll see that there's a few of those ideas that I've just mentioned there that you can polish up and look at some further information on. Um, but the, the, the main thing is just remember that you need to give a massive amount of value to be able to prize that email address from someone. Um, everybody knows that uh, uh, the online game is to get our details because that's the whole point of marketing is lead generation, right? And so something like that can be uh, how you would start to fill your database. Now, if you've got budget, what I would do is I would just build, you know, create some lead gen ads, right? So if you had an ebook and you did some Facebook lead gen ads, you would just very quickly go, blah, 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 right? And you'd get a ton on there. Um, so I would really think about that. Um, Claire's just said here, uh, can I share my lead magnet on here? So that's a good concept. So Claire's going to share uh, an example of a uh, landing page, which probably has um, some sort of lead magnet. And that's, you know, that's where you push people to that will then fill her hopper with inquiries, right? So so that's what you've got to do. So once you create that, that consider asset, then you just point traffic towards it. And that's very, very important. So um, as we do, um, you know, so so I, I hope that helps. Um, when you think about autoresponders afterwards, if you've got a landing page with a form, that should then submit that person straight into, say, your mail or light, and then that can then trigger an automatic email to them. Um, these softwares tend to have um, forms built in. So both MailerLite and Active Campaign, you can create a form within them. And so therefore, when people you can then embed that form on the landing page. So when people are submitting the, the, the form, it's actually submitting just directly into MailerLite. And then an autoresponder can be sent uh, from that system. So that's how you would do that, Ryan. Um, cool. I hope that helped. Um, look, guys, I'm going to take one final question. Um, but before I do, just as a reminder, if you want to spend some time one-to-one -one with me, um, then let's book into my calendar here. And I'd love to go through and demo what the Million Dollar Sprint's all about and also how you can then start to put a scale model together for 2023. Um, you'll see there um, that I've just put it into the chat. So do jump in. If you want to know where to find that, it's at the top of my website, free strategy session. And then you can go into click this orange button and it takes you to here. Cool. Right. I've, as I say, got time for one last question um, and uh, then we'll close for today. Who wants to take the final or, or final final comments or things that they've seen? <laughs> Fine. Well, look, if, if there is no final... Test, you've done a good job, mate. <clears throat> good stuff. Good stuff. Right. That's actually, oh, okay. We got Claire here. Many of the mailing systems have landing pages you can build on there as well. Right. So, so what Claire's saying in the chat there, uh, thank you, is that actually not only can you build the forms, but you can also build the landing pages, which is true of Active Campaign and Mailer Light. You can actually build the landing pages. But ultimately, if you, you know, look, most website providers, you know, everything from a Wix to a WordPress. You, you can create autoresponders. You can actually embed forms within these things. Um, so it's just about, um, I, I guess the point is, if you don't know how to do something, just YouTube it. It will show you how to work that through. Um, if not, um, go and find a web developer, go build it for you. Um, cool. All right. And on that note, um, thank you all so much. I hope this really helps. And uh, do get your long-term warming up email sequences rocking and rolling. They will pay dividends over time, trust me. Um, so... I look forward to seeing you all next week. If you want to know, by the way, um, where the agenda is for next week um, and what we're doing, um, you'll see on here we've got our marketing roundtable um, landing page on our website. And you'll see here that week two, social media posts and warming up emails. So tomorrow, uh, sorry, next Wednesday, nine o'clock is all around W income and work half the time. Looking forward to seeing you at that session. 
um, and also in a one-to-one soon. Big love, take care, and I'll see you all uh, next week. Bye. Bye-bye, bye-bye, bye-bye.